Hi there, welcome to Two Birds, I'm Fiona and welcome back if you've practiced with me before. Today's class is the fourth installment in my morning series of classes where we explore more warming sequences in each of the editions. And today's class is a warming and dynamic flow, but I do offer modifications uh, along the way so you can just flow with your own energy levels in an accessible way. We conclude practice with a cooling pranayama and meditation. And it's not essential, but you may wish to have a yoga block and a folded blanket for your practice this morning. And I really hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for joining. Namaste. And begin your practice laying down on your back. Take your feet wide to the side edges of your mat and gently invite your knees to knock in toward one another, resting your hands on your body. If it feels comfortable for you, closing your eyes. And take the next few moments to align yourself so you feel supported, smoothing, balancing your back body. And you can empty your weight into the support beneath you with a few audible exhales and sighs. And then just sealing your lips, breathing in and out through your nostrils. Inviting your breath to gradually deepen and brighten into the full frame of your torso. Feeling the momentum and even rhythm of your breath building. Setting the tone and tempo for your practice this morning. And take the next few moments to call upon your inspiration for practice today and your day ahead. And expressing that intention with a few kind words to yourself. And then follow your next breath in and out. And gently blink the eyes open and gather your knees in toward your chest. Letting your low back soften into the floor, you can have a little rock side to side there. Take your hands now to the tops of your knees, press your knees away so your arms straighten and start by circling your knees away from one another. Softening your groins, your buttocks and your hip creases. And circling back now, opposite direction. And left foot to the floor now, moving into a reclined hip groin stretch. Right ankle crossing on top of your left knee, hug the left thigh in. Now let your back body really drop into the floor arm bones draw back and continue with that sweet deep breath in and out through the nostrils moving into a recline twist and you may wish to cross your right leg over your left here or simply stack your knees for a gentler option taking your knees to the left arms out wide to a T Breathing into the right side of your body, fanning your ribs. Relaxing your legs heavy. Next exhale coming up and setting up for your hip groin stretch. Opposite side, left ankle, top of the right knee, left toes flexed.
maintaining a spacious feeling throughout your body there, breathing slow, deep breath. Release this left side now, make your way into your twist, legs wrapped or stacked. Resting your knees to the right now. Taking three full breaths. Firming your abdominals, coming back to centre. Hug both knees in and then raise your head and your shoulders. Rest on the low part of your shoulder blades so you're tucking in. And then on an inhale, send your legs away, your arms out wide to the side. Exhale, curl back in. Breathing in, legs away, arms wide. Exhale, tuck in. And just stay with this sequence. If you're still working on your core strength, extend your legs a little higher toward the ceiling. Legs a little lower, arms overhead for more heat and challenge. Wherever you're at, mindfully not overarching your low back as your legs reach away. So your abdominals are braced as you expand. Next time your legs are extended, hold there. Reach your arms alongside your body in a low boat, looking down your body. And then just see if you can reduce the trough in your low back, firming your anterior core. Maybe lowering the legs. Take one more breath. And recline back, knees in, and relax your neck. Let's come over onto our hands and knees now. We'll set up for cat and cow. Ten fingers spread, ten toes reach back. And just start with your inhale, drawing your heart forward, softening your belly. And then exhale, dome your spine, widening through your middle and your upper back. So take a few more rounds here, following your breath's natural rhythm. Warming up the bones of our spine, bringing some gentle movement to our hips. One more round in each direction. And as you make your way back there, we'll set up for downward dog now. Hands can walk forward as you raise your hips. Start with the knees bent, stretching up through the sit bones, elongating the space between your waist and your hands. And then just straighten your right leg without losing that shape through your spine, even pressure through the hands. And then just changing sides, left heel down, right knee bends. And then alternating now, pedaling your heels. And when you feel ready, settling into a place of stillness, full down dog. Eyes fall steady. Take one more smooth breath in, send the gaze forward, bend the knees, end of your exhale, step forward to the top of your mat. Slide the hands up your shins, straight legs, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold in, Uttanasana. Rise to stand, circle your arms, overhead, come up slow. Exhale, press your prayer hands to your heart. Warming up, two rounds, Surya Namaskar A now. 
Breathing in, raise your arms overhead. Exhale, forward bend over the legs. Full breath in, halfway lift, extending long through your waist. Exhale, hands down, step back, plank pose. Pause here, breathe in, firm belly. Exhale, knees, chest and chin to the floor. Coming onto your belly for cobra pose. Wait for your in-breath to open into your back bend. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Five deep breath. Spreading, widening through the base of your hands, base of your knuckles. Pressing back through the top of your thighs, extending into your heels. End of your exhale, looking forward between your thumbs. Travel to the top of your mat. Breathing in, lengthen, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, release, fold in. Breathe in, rise to stand, so a long breath here. Exhale, hands to your heart. One more round, Surya Namaskar A. Arms circle overhead, gaze up, spot your thumbs. Exhale, bend the knees and forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway, looking forward, open throat. Exhale, step back, plank pose. Take a moment of pause, breathing in. Exhale, lower to the floor. Bhujangasan, cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Practicing deep, unhurried breath. Spreading a spacious awareness through your whole body. Completing your next exhale, walk, step or float to the top of your mat, lengthen on your inhale, folding in, root down through your feet, rise up, reach up tall, and press your hands to your heart, standing evenly, make contact with your breath. Hold your waist now. We're going to move into triangle pose, stepping your left foot back and either lining your heels up or heel to arch alignment. Float the arms out wide on your inhale and then reaching forward through your right arm, your right side waist on your exhale. Left arm floats up. Try and feel the fullness of your breath around your ribs. Firm activation through the leg muscles. Sense and feel the ground beneath your feet. Now take your left hand behind the back of your head. Support your head with your hand and point your left elbow toward the front of the room. So you feel that stretch through the left side body all the way to the left elbow. Gently lean the chest back a little. And then on your next breath in, coming into reverse warrior, bending your right knee, taking a half bind, reach your left hand behind you, either to the small of your back or inner right thigh, right arm reaches up and back. And keep the legs where they are, coming upright, hands behind the back now, warrior two with the hands interlaced. And then opening, brightening into the chest as the chest lifts with your breath. Fists draw down. On your exhale, bring your chest toward the inner right knee for humble warrior. Forward folding. Arms float away from your back in your comfortable range of motion. Keep your back foot grounded, right hip hugging in. Building a little warmth in the legs and the shoulders there. 
and release hands to the floor downward dog splits on your inhale send your right leg up and back and if it feels good you can bend the knee and open up the hip even pressure into your hand shoulders level breathing in straighten and square your hips and then float forward to a three-point plank your right leg's lifted moving into left side vashistasana side plank and the option here is to drop your left knee to the floor for support or challenge your balance and keep your right leg hovering here for three more breath lifting your left hip up away from the floor and release to your plank pose nice strong belly breathing in and a vinyasa opportunity to really slow your movement down here sink your breath no rush and downward facing dog finding a steady expansive shape neutralizing any over effort softening your eyes relaxing your mouth making space for a deeper breath in full complete breath out take one more full breath look forward exhale travel to the top of your mat open on your inhale Ardha Uttanasana fold on your exhale rise to stand reach up lower your hands to prayer left side now hold the waist right foot steps back setting up for trikonasana triangle pose deliberately engaging your legs reaching forward and down and finding a full expansion across your chest between the hands there as you linger here feel your next breath in connect to your exhale breath by breath calm and steady right hand to the back of your skull and then send the right elbow a little more forward toward the front of your room seeking sensation through the right side of your body try and maintain your breath's rhythm and then inhale coming up bending into your left knee reverse warrior option to half bind here right hand behind left arm reaches up and then exhale warrior two legs wind the hands behind your back interweave the fingers notice if there's any room in your body to lengthen your tailbone down draw your lower belly in so you feel supported And then on your exhale fold into humble warrior drifting your chest toward your inner left thigh as you bow in as you bow in your chin tucks in lightly feet stay grounded and then just release hands to the floor down dog splits send your left leg up and back bend the knee open your hip there rolling open pointing your left knee up toward the ceiling re-lengthening through the front of your thigh next breath in straighten and square the hips shift forward find your three-point plank lightly tuck your tailbone remind your abdominals to join in and then your choice modified or full side plank right hand stays down on the mat it's your foundation left hand up toward the ceiling find your balance last few breaths here right side waist engaged and release vinyasa or take rest we'll all meet up in downward facing dog Just challenging yourself in balances or postures that quicken your breath or create that little bit of stress is helpful for building resilience in our nervous systems as long 
as we offer ourselves the contrast of returning to a state of calm. So if downward facing dog doesn't feel calm or restful right now, you can take your knees to the floor for child's pose. And we're here for five slow cycles of breath, reset. And exhaling, float the feet to the top of your mat. When you arrive, lengthen Ardha Uttanasana, forward fold on your out breath, rise to stand, and then hands to your hips. Stepping your feet hips width apart, preparing for Padangustasana, elbows back, chest open, breath in, and then fold down over your legs. Hook the big toes with your peace, fingers and thumb. Take a breath in, halfway lift. Breath out to fold in toward your legs. Feel free to bend the knees here. Drop the weight of your head toward the floor. Slide the shoulder blades down the spine so you keep space around your neck. Keep your bind, take a halfway lift, release and fold in, coming all the way to stand, rise up, reach up tall, stretch your body out, on your exhale hold the waist and here you might like a block for the next sequence if you have one. If you do, you can place it to the outside of your right foot when you're ready. Step your left foot back now to set up for pyramid pose. Stagger your feet wide so you have a nice stable base of support and either take reverse namaste with your arms behind your back or catch opposite elbows. Draw the front of your shoulder heads back, breathing in, lift the chest. And on an exhale, fold out over the midline of your right leg. You can take a few breaths to arrive and you should be able to feel the shape of your back underneath your hands behind you there. So you're feeling for a mild back bend between the shoulder blades. So you're not only lengthening into the right hamstrings, but you're also elongating your spine. Next breath in, push down and away with your right foot, rise upright and transitioning into revolve triangle, Paravita Trikonasana. Right hand to your waist, breathe your left arm up toward the ceiling and then folding forward in half on your exhale, left hand can land on your block if you have one or to the outside of your right leg or foot. So give yourself permission to micro bend the right leg just a little so you're not locking your knee and same time wrap your right thigh bone back in space. So revolving to your right Last step, right arm reaches toward the ceiling, straight line, right hand to your left. Two more breath. And unwind, hands to the floor, take the block to one side, hold the waist, coming back to stand. And then from here, we're gonna step up into Malasana Yogi Squat at the top of our mat. Step the feet wide and then your choice sitting back on your calves coming all the way down or simply keeping the hips a little lifted if you need to accommodate your knees. Once you settle, feeling a nice fullness down in the lower back as you stretch out.
and you can either pause and hold here or option to glide up into crow pose bakasana climbing your knees onto your upper arms gazing forward grip with your fingertips a little so they act like breaks and then float the feet keep breathing either take a vinyasa from here or if you need to take rest stepping quietly back downward facing dog and we'll all meet up there full breath in looking forward from your downward dog end of your exhale bend the knees and make your way top of the mat breathing in Ardha Uttanasana exhale here pause and fold we're going to hold it here either taking gorilla arms if you've been in crow pose bakasana sliding the palms of your hands under the soles of your feet or an easy forward fold soft knees holding onto the frame of your elbows Calm breath, pushing it down into the palms of your hands, lifting up through the hands, releasing through the back of the wrists. And then stepping off your hands, rising up to stand, come up slow, full breath. And then take your hands to your hips. And we'll move over to the second side. Take your block if you're using one to the outside of your left foot now. And stepping your right foot back for pyramid pose. Taking care how you place yourself. I like my feet about hips width apart for balance. And that's particularly helpful in revolve triangle because it allows you more room in your hips to fold evenly. And taking your preference with your arms, either reverse prayer or hands holding onto opposite elbows we'll breathe a full breath in brighten your chest lift up nice firm belly as you exhale follow your nose and forward fold so keep the feet active pushing into the floor keep the legs active by scissoring the feet toward one another as if you're trying to pucker the mat in the middle of your mat and scanning your body for any subtle adjustments you could make here to feel more balanced across your hips and sacrum open across your chest maybe a little longer through the sides of your neck breathing your way all the way upright when you're ready transitioning into a revolve triangle left hand to your left waist right arm reaches up on your out breath folding and revolving now to your left so one of the temptations here is to lead your twist with your face <laughs> and so you may find your head starts reaching beyond your left leg to your left see if you can keep your head in line with your left leg try spiral through your rib cage instead final few breaths and release stepping back through a vinyasa if you'd like to keep flowing downward dog if you'd like to do less staying in touch with your intention for your practice your energy levels and just savor this downward dog as your body warms up you might notice that you can breathe into different parts of your body that weren't as accessible from when you started your practice just notice now the flow direction of your breath staying current aware and present into your left foot now we're going to raise the right leg up and back down dog splits exhaling step forward high lunge 
So be on the balls of your left toes, rise up. Lengthening up through your waist, perhaps a little bend in your left knee. And we're here to transition, we're going to make our way into Eagle Pose. To balance, float the arms down to shoulder height. And then step and wrap your left leg over your right leg. And then sit low, so motioning your hips down and back. When you're ready, wrap your arms, right arm on top, left arm under. And then hug your legs, your arms to the midline of your body. Rounding through your upper back. And if you're feeling steady on your exhale, you're welcome to fold in. Two more breath. And unravel, release. Step your left foot back to arrive in lunge legs and we'll make our way into lizard pose from here so walk your hands to the inside of your right foot find an optimal stride between your left knee and your right heel so your right knee can stack right above your ankle and then pause for five breaths you can be on your fingertips palms forearms stretching the length of your breath now that you're in a more passive shape last few breaths here if you'd like to add on and it's successful you can reach back right hand and connect it with your left foot for a quad stretch releasing here reframe your right foot and this time we're just going to step back to downward facing dog we'll skip a vinyasa We'll transition over to the opposite side. So centering your right foot, inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step up for your high lunge. Breathing your full, slow breath. Finding your balance. Arms float down, preparing for eagle, Garudasana. Right leg steps up and over your left. Left arm over your right. The more you sit back into chair position, the tighter the hug of your legs, the deeper the outer hip stretch here. Take a few out breaths to fold if you're feeling balanced. You can do that incrementally. And release. Lizard pose, right foot stepping back now. Knee to the floor, hands to the inside of your left foot. And take the next few breaths just to tidy your shape up. Keep your right buttock slightly engaged. And get the feeling you're scissoring your right knee toward the top of your mat. So you'll contract your hamstrings a little there as you lengthen the hip flexors through the front of the thigh. Either stay here or last few breaths, option to reach your left hand for your right foot. and release reframe your left foot and either stepping back through a vinyasa or make your way into a child's pose and we'll all meet up there no rush any new child's pose just dissolving 
the effort through the back of your body, your shoulders, all the parts of your spine, and then just let your jaw unhinge. And slowly sitting upright and we'll set up for camel pose. Raise your hips above your knees so you're standing on your shins. Take your hands to the small of your back for support. So you can tuck your toes here or keep the feet flat. As you inhale, breathe your chest toward the ceiling. Lift the ribs up out of your hips. Exhale, gently tip your upper body back as you press your hips forward lightly, firm your buttocks. So you can stay supported here, hands on your back, or you can release your hands to your feet. Your final option, you can let your head drop back, opening into the throat. Two more breaths. Release your chin to your chest, coming back upright and return to kneel, reset, hands in your lap. So we're going to do one more round here and I just want to remind you that I'm just here as a guide to offer up a practice, but ultimately it's yours. You've got choices, so give yourself permission to keep your hands on your back if it helps you to feel more supported in your back. So we're going to take the next few breaths to make your way into your version of Camel Pose Ustrasana. Conscious of your breath and trying not to allow your hips to tip back here. Get that feeling you're pressing them forward with the support of your buttocks. The strength of your hamstrings as you lift up and then back. Coming out of the posture whenever you're ready. And then we'll return for a brief pause, child's pose, just to decompress. You can wrap your arms alongside your body and curl in. Releasing, softening the muscles either side of your spine. Next sequence, we'll move ourselves upside down. <laughs> and as with the previous classes in this series, you have options, uh, a modified version with a blanket or a block under your buttocks laying on your back and your legs up. Option one. Option two, dolphin prep, down dog on your forearms. And that's a really nice transition here from your child's pose. And it also just offers that opportunity to place your head below your heart. If you're not comfortable on your forearms, you can do a final downward dog, long stride. And option three, coming into a headstand if it's in your practice. We're going to take about the next minute and a half to turn yourself upside down aiming here to calm and cool the nervous system after our flow. So balancing and contrasting the effort we've expended with rest, moving into your version that best suits your energy levels, your needs today. Wherever you're at, just allowing your eye gaze to feel calm, corners of your eyes relaxed, relaxing your mouth and your jaw.
Last 30 seconds here, just managing your time. Making your way down, knees in toward your chest if you've been on your back. And otherwise return to your child's pose, releasing, letting go of any muscular effort through your upper body. And then from here we'll transition into an upright seat. Extending both legs out in front of you. Coming into Janu Shisasana, bending your right knee, sole of your right foot to your inner upper left thigh. Balanced on your sit bones, breathing your arms up toward the ceiling. And to exhale to fold out over your left leg. We've got eight breaths here. So incrementally making your way a little deeper into your forward fold, breath by breath. Back of your left leg, pressing into the mat, keep the left toes flexed. And then on your inhale, lifting up. So you're going to bend the left leg now. And then cross your right arm over your left arm and catch a hold outside of your left foot. So your arms are crossed and you're holding the outer edges of your feet. Then tip lightly back onto the soft part of your buttocks, raising your left leg. And you're welcome to keep the left knee bent or you're working towards straightening your left leg just within your own comfortable range of motion. And as you hold here, just prioritize lifting a little taller through your spine. And now you're gonna release just your left hand and either reach your left arm back behind you for a twist or rest your left fingertips to the floor if you need a little extra support there. Send the left leg over to your right. And your torso starts to look out to the left. Keep lifting tall through the spine. One more deep breath. Exhale and release. Left foot to the floor. And take your right ankle now to the top of your left knee for a seated hip groin stretch. You can lean back into both hands there. And for those of you with more flexibility in your hips, it might make sense to come into double pigeon from here or far log pose. You can stack the shins, narrow the knees and let the legs fall down toward the floor. If you're with me, you can take a little rock side to side. And the left heel can come a little closer toward you if you'd like a stronger stretch. And release there. Two straight legs, shake the legs out in front of you. Left knee bends now, Janushi Sasana. Arms rise with your in breath. And exhale in forward fold. So with your extended leg engaged, pressing into the mat, next in breath, just lift up a little way and on your out breath, firm your belly back toward your spine. Just make more space through the front of your spine and you support your low back as you fold. Rising on back up with your in-breath and transition into a heron twist. This time, left arm crosses over your right. 
bend the knee and catch the outer edges of your right foot. Dipping back onto the soft part of your buttocks like you would in boat pose and then lift your leg, extending into the back seam of your right leg and really uprighting your spine. And then now take your twist, your right arm reaches back and your right leg transitions to your left. So you might feel a nice outer hip stretch here in this shape too as you revolve. Just staying mindful of your posture. And one more deep breath in and release for a seated hip groin stretch. Settle your left ankle, top of the right knee now. Leaning back in your hands. And then for more sensation, you can walk your right heel in toward your buttocks. Or move into double pigeon if that's accessible for you. For less sensation, if it's tight, walk your heel away. release. We're going to make our way into a comfortable cross-legged seat for our final breath work and meditation. Feel free to use a blanket underneath your seat. Sitting tall and easeful. Leave the eyes open if that feels best. If it feels good to close the eyes, close the eyes. And please just take the next minute or so to become aware of your breathing. Allow your body to settle. Dropping your awareness to the pit of your belly and observe your abdomen rising, falling. Nothing more to do, nothing to force, just simply observing. Now applying a very subtle ujjayi breathe so the sound of your breath is all but internal. Emphasizing that soft lifting of your navel, feeling the side bodies and the lower back as you breathe in. And practicing a calm, relaxed out breath. Just as slowly, smoothly as possible, filling, emptying the lower, lower lungs. So today's pranayama is called shitali breathing. It's a cooling and calming breath practice. So it's ideal after warming your body with movement, uh, but also whenever you're feeling agitated, fatigued or hot in your body or mind. This practice acts like an internal air conditioner for our body and mind. So to practice, we inhale through the mouth through a curled tongue and we exhale through the nose with the lips sealed. So when you're ready, curl your tongue and poke it slightly out of your mouth so the air can pass through a straw-like hold made by the tongue. So if it's not possible to curl the tongue, sometimes it's not, you can purse the lips like you're breathing through a straw. Exhale all the air out of your lungs. Inhale, draw a long, refreshing breath in through the mouth. Top of your in-breath, seal the lips. When you're ready, exhale through the nose. And then just continue on sending the coolness of your breath through toward the upper palate of your mouth. Calm, relaxed breath out. So we're here for two more minutes practicing our shitali breathing.
And this practice cools the air with moisture as it passes over your tongue and into the top palate of your mouth. So it has this lovely cooling effect on our bodies, but also our mind. Here for one more minute. And then just complete your next cycle. Sealing the lips and just pause and feel the effects of the practice. Sensing any areas of your mind, body that feel refreshed or cooled. Just remain established now in restful awareness. Turn your attention now to your intention. Seeing it clearly play out in your mind's eye. Setting your mind, your day and yourself in that direction. And when you're ready, let your breath deepen. Gently blink the eyes open. Thanks so much for joining me for this morning practice. I hope you have a beautiful day ahead. Namaste.